Sean McDermott put a rest to what's going on with Stephon Diggs and Josh Allen and all those Buffalo Bills that are expected to win the Super Bowl. But are we buying it? I think so. I think we'll put it to rest at least until the playoffs. We showed you those numbers yesterday. We have Chase Daniel in studio. I hate some people say Chase Daniels. I've never seen him like react like that. Like it'd be if I called Stephon Diggs, Stephon Diggs. It's not his name. Get it right. We'll do that. We've got Hamilton. We've got, oh, Father's Day. Don't get him a, a tie or a pizza oven. Get him these gifts right now. No shade at pizza ovens. I don't know why I said that. Father's Day is around the corner. It is Sunday. And pizza ovens are a legit great gift. And if you just, you know, I imagine if you're in a partnership in a coupledom that's outside, you want your tell, tell your, your partner to go kick rocks for a couple of hours, get them out there making you some pizzas uh, for dinner. Fun for the whole family, as my producer Richard just told me in our ear. Okay, we've got some NFL storylines here. Chase Daniel will be joining us shortly to go over some Father's Day gifts that I think uh, are appropriate for the day uh, from my very, you know, Know, my vantage point and angle, but we do want to give an update on Buffalo. And yes, we did make some assumptions yesterday, and we did dig into like what this could maybe be. There's some very interesting playoff numbers when it comes to Stephon Diggs in the postseason, not being targeted, not having a touchdown, not getting a lot of love from Josh Allen. And you know, when he was upset after that Bengals loss and he left, it was probably because he wasn't getting the ball in those times. So we don't know exactly what's going on with Diggs, but there wasn't positivity because he was on the field. Sean McDermott provided some clarity on why Diggs left Bill's camp early on Tuesday. And we got to a point yesterday where I just we just felt like we all needed a break and some space. And so I gave Steph permission uh, to get some space and 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 uh, and head out and uh, and then picked up those conversations after practice. Um, so let me make it clear it was it was not Steph leaving unexcused. He was excused by me. Um, and so those conversations uh, have got us to a to what I think and believe is a great spot. He was concerned a couple of days ago. Clearly, there's been some movement or conversations. I mean, is it weird that they needed space after they've had like months and months of space leading up to this? Maybe just a little bit. But Conrad, our line producer, after a show, he goes outside and does like three laps. You know, some people just have their thing to do, right, Conrad? You ain't wrong, Kay. You ain't, you ain't wrong, wrong. Kay. He disappears and then he brings me a snack and everything's great. We all get out and we, we sit down and things are great. So people, you know, people have their things. And Coach McDermott seems to believe the issue is behind him. At least he's saying, though, which is what he should do. So let's just all take his word for it and drop this for now. Diggs was there. He was dapping up Josh Allen. They're seen walking together. So I hope it's over because Diggs is a special player. I do not want to see his perception or legacy or anything tarnished even a little bit because we honestly don't know what's going on. And I I'm going to say it's over. We're putting it to rest until the playoffs, okay? Dot, 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 uh, until those big games in the playoffs because this team has a crazy expectation. This boy is the cover boy on Madden. Stephon Diggs has been there in those big playoff moments. Mini miracle. He wants the ball. Will Josh have the stones to get it to him even if there's guys draped over him or is he going to give it to Gabe or is it, those things are going to be scrutinized and we're going to remember them even from now um, looking back there. Danita, is everything okay? <laughs> we are running, we are doing laps in, Conrad, laps are happening in studio today. No, laps happen after the show, it's not a, during the show. <laughs> it's a special, it's a special show because we have Chase Daniel here and I'm very excited to talk about Mizzou and all sorts of uh, fun NFL stories and I'm sure he's got opportunities on here on like the chemistry between a quarterback any wide receiver, so let's get to it. But um, this weekend is Father's Day, guys, and buying your dad the perfect gift um, can be challenging. And I feel bad for dads because they get the worst gifts. It's true. They get the socks. And I'm not that I don't love a sock gift, or they get, like, a tool, or they get something. It's just always sort of, like... Stock, you know, or you know, or something that they don't want to use, or or you get them those like something that they have to wear. Like if you're a little kid and you get your dad like some awful T-shirt of like Bart Simpson saying "World's Best Dad," like they have to wear that because you're a little kid and like they have. It's just like not the best thing. So we thought that we would help dads out, and why not uh, bring out a dad to help me? Uh, not just any dad, dad whose kids are brought to tears at the very sight of him. Here is NFL quarterback Chase Daniel's son seeing him on the NFL. I don't want to cry. Um, I haven't seen this. Let me take a look.
that is Preston Daniel Chase. Daniel, here we've been hanging out all the morning. How, how, when you first saw that, what did you think? I mean, just tears of joy a little yeah. bit. I mean, the, the, he was given, brought the tears of joy, and obviously that was a preseason game, and and for him to actually understand what Dad does in the time. That was like my goal was like play as long as humanly possible so my kids can understand what I do because it's pretty special. I think a lot of NFL players have that mentality, yeah, right? I yeah. want my kids here at training camp, bring everybody. That's yeah, and last year was his first year where he really understood like what dad does and he was just, you know, there's a family right there. He was brought to tears. Chase, I mean, you have three now? We have three, like three under five. Two. Yeah, it's Ashton <gasps> on the far left. She is almost two. Um, Preston is five and a half and we have Parker who's our wild child, she is three, three and a half. So it's been it's been a journey, we're really busy, my wife's really busy, she's been amazing. Um, but yeah, the, the video was was so cool, I decided to post it. Yeah. I don't post a lot about my kids, yeah. I try to keep them off social media, but that was a special moment. The Chargers reposted, NFL reposted it, so it was a clip that went pretty viral, it was awesome. I love it, I love that we have you here today. Yeah, uh, and we're gonna talk me. about the Chargers, you know I have that helmet, it's not just because you're here. Yeah. That Chargers Look helmet that. is up there. It's Chargers and Saints. Love, well yeah, I love those Saints, and you love Drew Brees, and it's you amazing. love, come on, we got all this. We yeah. got a lot, of, a lot of connections here to talk about. Father's Day is Sunday, so happy early Father's Day. Thank beautiful you. dad of three beautiful yes. children. Yeah. Uh, worst gift you've ever gotten. I don't care about the best gift. I worst mean, gift. listen, I heard the intro to the Father's Day gifts. I mean, it's got to be socks, right? Like, I have so <laughs> many pairs of socks, and not just any socks. Like, yeah. d like, give me some, like, stay at socks with some cool Something. design on them. And it's just, like, white dress socks or, like, really? black dress socks. Like, yeah, like, it's just, it's not what we want. It's not what you want. No. What would you want? Well, like, I, I, I was this saying. With men. I mean, you don't uh, communicate. Tell the world what you want for Father's I mean, Day. For me personally, like spend a little bit of time with my kids and then just go to the golf course. Just like time away to just to so play around. So you want time golf. with and then time, time away. with. So you you feel like you're you know doing that, but then yeah. like a trip to the golf course. Really, or something it sounds, like that. sounds it's, like Father's Day is every easy. Sunday then. Yeah. In most houses yeah. across well, America, listen, listen, in my opinion. I don't play a lot of golf, so this okay. Father's Day, all I want to do is. Just go play around the golf. That's okay. It. That's easy. I like that. But I would say, I saw you, I heard you say, like, hey, you got to wear these shirts. If I don't like the shirt, I'm not wearing it. Really? Yeah, like, I don't care, like, what it is. Like, luckily, my wife's, like, keep me fashion forward, like, whatever yeah. it is. Shout so out she to doesn't, her. Yeah, she doesn't, like, you know, put me in anything, like, bad or anything. But if I got something I didn't like, But it's so funny when kids are like, it. I made you this off. And then you have to wear it or a tie that they're, it's, yes. it says world's best dad. And like, why aren't yeah. you wearing the yeah. toy? Okay, so I thought we could take a look at, and my producer, Eric, looked this up. Um, it, these are, this is Esquire. This is the top 2023 gifts, according to them. Craft Beer Club subscription. Therabody, Thera, that's a good one. The Therabody Thera thing, like we that? Have, yeah, we have, I have like 15 though. There's NFL, so it's, um, yeah. A personalized money clip is a terrifying gift. Yeah. That, anything personal. Do you like personalized Person, stuff? Um, not Dads really. don't care, moms. Not really. Moms, like, like they, they don't care. A pizza oven, like you said, great. A Yeti cooler. Hey, go to Dick's Sporting Goods, baby. Get those. Um, a meat thermometer. What That's good. You like, I oh, cook, yeah. Men, I like that. Men That's a good one. Gadgets. Like a really good meat thermometer or like just so you can cook your steak or your chicken perfectly. Like I'm all I'm all in. What about like subscriptions when they're like, bacon of the month club? What do you no, think about that? You're out on no, that. No, yeah, because it's just, if I don't use it, it just it's, it takes up freezer space, and okay. I like my freezer space. Okay, I yeah. love that. So here, I thought I have a couple gifts, and I want you to okay. sort of tell me. But I, I mean, for these sort of gifts, I literally think I'm not kidding. Go to Dick's Sporting Goods. I just shot another commercial there, and it's like it's like a city. You go in mecca. there, yeah. and there's everything you could possibly need. So that's the first place that I would go. But these are sort of ideas from my from sort of the the partner vantage point. <laughs> Granted, I'm not married, and I don't have a husband that has kids. But I'm gonna <laughs> help you guys anyway, cause I know. Men, let's do this. <laughs> Don't get them, okay, here's what I would do. Don't get them like a pizza oven or a meat thermometer. You, here's what you do. You find, as, as the woman, as the partner, you, the mom, you find a concert to a show that he would like to go to and you would like to go to, but you pick it on a weekend that you, it takes a lot of research, oh. okay? Girls like to be prepared. Let's say you have a golf weekend with the boys in yeah. Scottsdale. Yeah. Just a golf weekend in Scottsdale. <laughs> I've been, I've had that line used on me before. <laughs> and then you find, oh, Pearl Jam. Pearl Jam is playing that weekend. Those are the tickets you get him. Amazing. Because you know, yes. he's saying, I can't go. Pearl Jam, yeah, here, but here's the tour right of here. Of course, but you pick a week and you say, oh great, September 10th is always the weekend that he goes and visits Uncle Bobby down yeah. in Nashville. So that's the weekend I'm picking because then you get it for him and you're, oh, and then he says, I can't go and you go, oh. You can't, and then you get to go to see Pearl Jam. Yeah, so you, you like the gifts that keep, keep giving, giving to you. Or, or benefit oh, me in, in, I gotcha. yeah. in some way. Who wants a craft I mean, beer? I'd love to go to Pearl Jam. There we go. There. Okay, yeah. wifey's watching down yeah. in San Diego. Just, Let's just go. Just um, <laughs> don't get them a craft beer 
uh, subscription, guys. I think Sunday tickets are a great gift. Oh. I've, this is okay. not an ad. This is no affiliation. But listen, it's both ways. If you're a football fan, it's a great gift for you. You're getting it for Love him, it. but you, but it's you know you're like the queen of the world if you get this gift for your entire family. And if you're not a football fan, it's also a great gift for you. That's a great gift because it is putting yeah. your biggest child, your husband and father of your beautiful children, in front of a TV for hours and hours, and you can do whatever you want on Sundays. Yeah, unless you have kids and you got to take care of the kids, it could backfire. Yeah, but it then we got to teach them young. Yeah, teach them young. Yeah, yeah, you absolutely. Got, get ready for the, Listen, these kids are on TikTok. They can't handle clips yep, longer than yep. five minutes. Welcome to 12 hours of Scott Hansen, yeah. everyone. Yeah, that, that's, awesome. that's the best way <laughs> to get people uh, out of that yeah. short attention span thing. Okay, what are other gift options I think I have? So, so yeah, Sunday ticket would be good. Okay, Met, you said it. The second I said meat thermometer, you went, oh. I'm in. Oh, a gadget. All in. Dudes are so easy. You guys love gadgets. Any sort of gadget is such a rope-a-dope for you. I have several friends who have bought manipulatively, which is what Father's Day is all about, these Dyson vacuums. Have you heard of these? Oh, yeah. We we, we have one that it needs replacing, honestly. So we I could, mean, I could get one. Because I do brag. like to, I do like Humble brag. They cost like $9,000. They were not $9,000 seven years ago. They were like oh. 200 Inflation, man. <laughs> 500 550 600 bucks. They're expensive, but they're worth it. I'm yeah. telling you, ladies, mortgage your house for this. Because <laughs> I have all of my, I have called four different friends in the last two, four months or so that are like, Griffin is vacuuming. Like he loves vacuuming. We got this Dyson vac. It is such an easy thing. If you want your husband to do chores around the house, you want dad, dad to start vacuuming. Yes, his name's Griffin and he's dating Tanya and he needs to marry Tanya. And that's oh what I think. Oh my gosh. So yes, yeah, so they're talking in my ear. That's a real thing. She's like, he likes vacuuming because he got this stupid gadget. Those vacuums are pretty powerful. Yeah. They are fun. Like I, I don't mind vacuuming around the kitchen, yeah. around the house with, with those. Yeah, I mean, you we like it. Get dad anything that's like, Home Improvement Binford 5000. Yeah, because he's going to take care of the home. Stupid. For you, it's going to look nice. No, he's doing it for you uh. because you guys love gadgets. <laughs> okay, so then and the other gift I had on here was one that I mentioned in the meeting. Maybe like an AirTag, like an Apple AirTag. Have you heard of these? Oh, definitely. Why an AirTag? Just because, you know, like you can like... You want to keep... Well, you know, husband, of... they lose things all the time. Oh. So, like their golf bag, you can just put, don't even tell them you're getting it. Don't yeah, even tell your, just, just make slip it, a it in there. Just because it's a nice thing to know, you know, put it in their car in, in, in case they lose their car. So you can track them. And then you put it, I mean, you don't have to tell them you're doing it. Oh. You just get it as a gift. What? What, Hamilton? Can I just send this entire segment, segment to a psychologist or a therapist <laughs> and have them break this down uh, and tell us what this says about you? Because what there's a lot going on here and. I wasn't yeah. going to say it. Apple AirTags. This says a lot about you, these <laughs> gifts. That That's was, all I'm going to say. That one was a joke, but the Dyson vacuum is a great trick. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. I'm all in. You guys are so easy. All right, <laughs> uh, let's, we're going to take a short break here. Coming up, it's you and me. And then oh. coming up, it's you and Hamilton. Hammer. And I've got ridiculous photos of the two of you from Mizzou. I can't wait to see if you went to Mizzou. <laughs> we might have some pic. No, no. we don't, but i got to find I some. I was going to be like, i got to no, find some. not on the show. <laughs> all right, we'll be right back. Great to see you. We're back with 14-year NFL vet, Heisman finalist, and Mizzou Tigers legend Chase Daniel. Uh, in the meantime, Hamilton has uploaded that video to all of my dating apps, so um, no one's ever taking me out ever again after Apple AirTag Gate. It was just a joke, people. Oh, Chase, you've been a free agent for about two years now. Is that true? No, I was with the Chargers. Yeah, for two Chargers. Years. Now free you're agent yeah. now. Yeah. Got it. So, What's your story? What's next? I don't know. You know, we're taking it day by day, step by step. So we'll just we'll see what happens. There's been some interest from teams, but I'm in no rush to sign and um, I've been enjoying doing this media stuff. I did NFL Network throughout the year and, and just different shows like this, like pop-in shows like this. So we'll see what happens, but I still feel like I can play at a really high level, still want to play at a high yeah. level, but um, you know, you never know what will happen. What did you learn about yourself or what did you learn about the business? I mean, you've been covered yeah. your entire life by yeah. people like me and then all of a sudden you're standing there with D'Angelo Hall, Omar Ruiz, who I love at NFL Media, yeah. and you crushed it. So yeah. what did you learn in that process? That Well, just a lot, like how shows just put together. I remember my first show going in my first of all my wife went to Mizzou as mm -hmm. well and she was a journalism major so she sort of prepped me on like what a show could look like 
But I walked in, I was telling, you know, Hammer and you, I was like, I walked in the first time doing the show and I'm like, okay, we're building a show from scratch because it's a reaction show. It's not yeah. like you have points to talk about before. So you go and you watch a show and these, these guys and producers are talking about like, hey, here's an A block, here's a B block. <laughs> I'm like, what is that? Here's an XO, here's the tell. I'm like, what gym. is that? Yeah, look at the gym. I'm like, where's, there's like 15 cameras. I'm like, am I, am I looking at the camera? Am I looking at, you know, so that to me, the first couple shows was difficult to sort of wrap my head around. But then just everyone there at NFL Media and NFL Network were so great. It just helped me learn the ropes. And so by like my third or fourth show, the producers were, you know, hey, what should we talk about today? So I felt a lot more wow. comfortable. Well, it's just because it's a reaction show. But you know, it. that's the and, thing. And you right? know the game. As quarterbacks, you go, you know, you know what to see. Here's the yeah. three or four points. And so it was really cool to be able to do. I think I did like 20 shows. So it was it was really good reps. I hired a broadcast agent last year, even Woo! when I was playing, because I'm like, hey, listen, I it's think so I, smart. I, I think I want to do this yeah. for a long time, because you can do it for a lot longer than you played. But also, you could learn so much about different opportunities and different media, and you just have a, have a really good appreciation for what you guys and girls um, do to, to cover the most popular game in the world, I think. You're saying you can't do it for as long as you played. You played for a long time. 14 today. years. You, can, yeah, you make I, me you can feel talk so football. old. Yes. It's great. You we were, were at the same time, Crazy. so you're just as old yeah. as I am. Four, I know I'm saying, <laughs> thanks. 14, and hence the lasers. Yeah. 14 years you were a quarterback yeah. in the league, right? Yeah. And you played for exactly one quarter of the NFL's current yeah. head coach. Is. Broadcasters like that, that, that you are you are a gem. You are bringing gold. All you have to do is talk about this. Yeah. Three Super Bowl champions in this group, Sean Payton, Andy Reid, Doug Peterson, they all have wildly different, unique personalities. Uh, what's the biggest thread those three had in common? That's a great question. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, Hammer put this list together and sent it to me last night, and I'm like, wow. I, it's been you'd be like, wow, like you actually just take a step back for a little bit, see and understand, like, this is really, really cool. And that's sort of why I've been able to stay around so long as I've have, have great relationships. But the common thread between those three coaches, right, Andy Reid, Sean Payton, Doug Peterson, all Super Bowl champions, they all know how to talk to the team. It's all personality based. And I'm not saying that these other coaches don't, but they have a way of really funneling what they want to say to players. And these, these are grown men, not, there's not college level players where they'll just believe you. It's the accountability factor. It's exactly what they wanted to do is like Sean Payton is like probably the most swaggiest coach I've ever been around, but he does it in a way that challenges players to play harder and play better for him. How? Give me and, an and, example. Well, he's just, he just How? walks in. He'll yeah. he'll walk down the hall, and I remember like my first year there, and I'm going for backup. It was like me and Patrick Ramsey, an old school name in, in Louisiana. We were it was 2010. It was after we won the Super Bowl, and I was third string, and I was, was competing for second string. I had a horrible training camp practice, and it was an open competition. They said, and Sean was like, "Hey, like you know, don't worry about it, but like." That pass you missed, that a grade school guy can do that, and I was like, oh, you know, it was, it was, it wasn't in like a mean rude way, but yeah. it was like almost like a snarky way where I walked away like I'm gonna prove you wrong. Wow. Like I'm gonna prove you. So there's all sorts of details like that, and he does it by each player. It's not just the team. It's so hard to understand, but you you can respect a guy like that. That's a player's coach. And what do I mean by player's coach? He demands respect, but he'll also be confident and swaggy and snarky in ways that just relates to the yeah. players. I think the coolest thing about him and the thing that, go, that goes um, sort of underrated or underappreciated about guys like him and Tomlin, and really you can say what you want about Belichick. I know he's not a player's coach, but the fact that you can get to players, I, I'll, let's take Belichick out of it because it's sort of going to muck up the thing here, but the fact that you can do it over and over. Yeah. That's the thing. Yeah. Like, sure, like, it'll work for five years, but if you're Pete Carroll and you're in that lot, that you're still reinventing ways yeah. to relate to your players. Like, it's hard to sustain that and, re and do that. There's no it's doubt crazy. about it. And the th thing about all these special coaches, right, all these coaches on the list and, and some more around the league. That's like some good Pete ones. Carroll, they've got some great ones. But they know how to keep a locker room together. There's going to be ebbs and flows in the year. It's not always going to be great. The number one thing that Andy Reid did in his first year, I was there his first year in Kansas City, was he really set the culture from day one. This is what, and it's just very black and white. This is what's expected of you, and this is how we're going to get there. And we went 9-0. and to start the year in yeah, 2013. And it's like, that helps. So you have to have success on the field for it to actually like, hey, ingrain. But they've built such an amazing culture there. And culture matters. Culture wins in the National Football League. Who is the best culture in the NFL right now? Who is the best what? Who is the best culture you think in the NFL? Who is a culture that if you were to oh, like, man. give them an so, award? So I think that there are like, on any given year, there's between five 
to eight teams that really have it together, right? You start, and those are the teams that are winning. You start with Buffalo, Cincinnati, Kansas City. I'd say New Orleans is still ingrained in that culture and what Dennis Allen has been able to do there. Um, like LA, LA Chargers were awesome culture. Like people wanted to go to work there and the results on the field were, were mixed the last two years yeah, with the Staley. But you Staley. can see it flip once but there's a little injection of new, of new leadership Absolutely. or that defined culture from Yeah, and like so Andy that's why did. these five to eight teams year after year are playing in the playoffs, very few. Like Doug Peterson, I'll take you. He took a really difficult Urban Meyer-led team yeah. last year and, and really turned it around. They had the same people for yeah. the most part. Now, they added some pieces in free agency, Christian Kirk, some free agents, stuff like that. But, like, what he was able to do, it's it's a direct reflection on him and the staff that he built, right? You talk to these head coaches, and they say, and I ask them, and people say all the time, what's the best thing you can do as a head coach? Hire an amazing staff because your staff is the one that's injecting the culture daily into your players, into your position players, and you take it position by position, yeah. and it grows. Offense, defense, special teams, it grows into one. And I thought Doug did a really good job of that. Yeah, McVay had that down, of yeah. course. I think Shanahan has that. Now he's out with you know without Ryan, he's you know. San Fran, you look at San Fran. Yeah, uh -huh. I mean it's like one it of the matters. better teams in the league. You mentioned the Chargers. And them being a great culture yeah. place. What happened then last year? I well, won't. Come uh, on. <laughs> injuries. Well. Injuries. Really? 100%. This is not excuses. You look at Mike Allen or Mike Williams and Keenan Allen and just what they meant to that team. I mean, they played two games, three games maybe together the entire year. Yeah. And that was the big that was the big thing about the Chargers forever. And then in 2021, my first year there, we were extremely healthy. We just couldn't really get over the hump. Um, but last year, I mean, you look at the last seven, eight games, our defense, the defense, I say our defense, I'm not on the team, their defense You might started, be again, yeah, who knows, yeah, you, you got a free agent here, baby. <laughs> but you look at those last seven, eight games, yeah. and they really started playing ball like Brandon Staley coached and hoped that they would. But we didn't have Joey Bosa. I mean, you have superstar players that were out. Keenan Allen, all three pro bowlers, Keenan Allen, Mike Williams, Joey Bosa, among others that are out, um, are starting left, or the starting left tackle, Rashawn Slater. So injuries definitely hurt. Yeah. Now, what they were able to do and what we were able to do last year was build on it and make the playoffs. And obviously, you know, you, you have the playoff loss, which is rough. You're up 27-0. Yeah. And, and the crazy fact about it is, is I've been a part of two of the worst comebacks in NFL playoff history. I was a part of that game on the sideline, and I was also part of do you remember the 2013 Indianapolis Colts, Andrew Luck yeah. diving fumble game against the Chiefs? Yeah. It was 28 points. Those are the two worst, com and I was on the wrong end of it. So, like, I've seen some crazy, I was on the Minnesota Miracle, wrong end of that. I've had some horrible Get this man a beer or somebody. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, what are we doing? But anyway, it's just, it's, it's all about culture in the NFL, and if yeah. that culture is right, and your players, your superstar players buy in, yeah. like the Chargers have. The Chargers players have sure, bought Sure, but it. I mean, that playoff loss, yeah, Brandon Staley got a lot of grief for that yeah. from the outside, and I'm sure from that locker room. Yeah. So culture, has, he's going to have to pick everybody up off the mat right now. Well, I think a lot of that had to do with um, in week 17 playing starters when it was yeah. already, you know, said that, hey, we were going to go to Jacksonville. But I get what he said. And you saw Mike Williams come out yesterday like, hey, I trust coach. I tr and it, that's oh, not, I didn't see that. He, yeah, did. he, said, right. he said, listen, it was his first media availability since he's broke his back that game and he and I read it on the way up here he said he said pretty much like we trust our coach like we get paid to play football we wanted to play and I agree with that but at the same time like that locker room they trust it like Staley has the locker room he has not even remotely lost the locker room they believe in him Telesco believes in him everyone believes in him and and if you have everyone believing in him I think they're going to make some amazing if they can stay healthy it's it's a scary roster like up and down the roster it's pretty scary Justin Herbert believe in him uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, he does. He does. And, and and I think he's excited about Kellen Moore coming in for the first year. The lefty, I mean, baby. I love the it. lefty, yeah. yeah. I mean, me and Kellen are, are like, we were playing ball at the same time. Like, he's yeah. my age. And he's, but you know, offensive coordinator. You look at his offense the last five years, it's like top six in the league every single year. So they're going to score points. This it's just, can their defense, can yeah. their defense Chase, hold up? Chase, this is not lip service. You are not. You are not just saying it. Like I'm, no. I'm sitting here three feet from you. You are. You believe, I believe in, in the it. Chargers. Yeah. You I do. mean, I, I, tr I truly do. I truly yeah. do because you look at the roster up and down. It's one of the most talented top 
two or three rosters. It has been for the past year in, year out. It has been. Can they take the next step? Can they have a playoff win? Can they go make a deep playoff run? The AFC is loaded. Yeah. Well, look at, loaded. Okay, but Sean Payton. You just got to get into the tournament. Sean Payton in yeah. that division. Denver. Now, now he's there. Yeah. Now, look at him. Look at Russell Wilson. How's yeah. that going to go? Well, you look at the defense, right? The defense is something that Sean, want, he wanted to go to a place where the defense was really, really good. And this Denver defense is top five in the league in every category. They're going to be that again this year. Now, it's going to be the Saints offense. It's going to be the Chargers offense. So how well is he going to install it? How well is he going to pick it up uh, in, in terms of Russell Wilson, right? Like, Russell and Drew have some similarities. Of course, they're both six feet. But they're, they're, they're insatiable appetite for, like, competing. Both of those guys is what I just draw from that. And that is what Sean wants. Like, Sean is going to get the absolute most out of him. I think, obviously, Russell's year last year has been talked about what he was able to do last year, he was hurt. He was injured. He's healthy. They said he shedded 12 to 14 pounds. I don't know what that's going to do with – it's a huge storyline. I don't know what that's going to do okay. with his play. Everyone wants to talk about it. What I'm interested about is, like, can you run the ball early in the year to get Russell really comfortable? Because the offense is very, very worried. Sounds like they should add a running back that might very, be on the I'm market. I'm just saying, Dalvin – do you uh, think no. they should? I don't, I don't know if they have the money. I mean, I think they should. Yeah. Everyone in the league should add Dalvin Cook. He's the best available guy. It's not Is even it close. the stupidest thing that he's out there, this, like, 1,000-yard receiver? I can't believe it. A guy, I mean, talk about being injured. He was yeah. injured to, uh, most of last year uh, loudly. He also yeah. had, he had the shoulder situation. He can't exactly beat his power running back. Yeah. And then he had literally no room to run on most plays and most runs last year with that yeah. offense. I don't, I don't get the whole point of, like, cutting a guy who's not making a huge salary but you have alexander madison but like you need a one-two punch in this league like yeah like it's just you have to have it dalvin wants to go to a winner and he's gonna yeah. get he's gonna get between you know six to ten million probably i don't know if it's a multi-year or not but it's all about this these running you talk about the running back market right now it's it's at the very bottom you talk about it's not the money it's the structure of the deal how is this deal structured? How is it going to get paid out? And that's big for him. He doesn't want to take an under-market deal because he ruins it for everyone of that's course. already low. Everyone behind him. And, and I'm sure he wants a little bit extra time, maybe maybe middle of training camp. He's a vet. Oh, rest that's his body. He's taking Go his, in, oh, take your okay. time. Think about that. Maybe there's an injury and you're going to get more money than you hoped. I mean, there's 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 that game to this, too. Uh, take a sip of water. I'm making you talk quite a lot. I mean, <laughs> you, poor, you poor thing over here. We're getting through so much stuff. But we're having so much fun. You, my friend, were a Heisman finalist and you had multiple multiple double-digit uh, win seasons at Mizzou, and you went undrafted because there was a stupid perception. You mentioned Drew Brees, and you mentioned Russell Wilson, both six-foot guys, yeah. that you couldn't have a sustainable long NFL career. We are seeing this change, yeah. right? We are seeing quarterbacks like Baker Mayfield and Kyler Murray and Bryce Young get drafted number one overall. So what percentage of you is glad that this percentage, that this is finally shifting? And be honest with me, like what percentage is a little upset that – it didn't happen while you were playing. Yeah, well, my, my whole thing about quarterbacks is if you can play, you can play. I don't care how tall you are. I don't care how short you are. In fact, they, there's lots of studies, and uh, I've read a bunch of them, where they say actually like 6'7 and over is bad. So, like, they're saying 6'7, 6'6 hmm. six, six to 6'0. Six I mean, you look at the history of the game, 6'7 quarterbacks, there's not a lot. And you look at the game 6' and under, now you're seeing that change is, hey, NFL offenses are moving toward college offenses, and, and they're sort yeah. of commingling. And so that is what's able for these guys that are short guys to be able to really take the next step in the NFL game. Now, size doesn't matter. You move. I, I was a part of – I was a teammate with Drew Brees for five years. He was the best I've ever seen. He's six foot at moving slightly to find a hole in the pocket to throw. Right, it's not like you're throwing over these guys. Justin Herbert, he gets balls batted down at the line because he's not. You know, everyone does it, but these six foot guys have to be really good at sliding left and right in the pocket. Um, so it, it is cool to see these six foot five ten Bryce Young, Kyler Murray. Can Bryce Young move and find that hole in the pocket? I mean, everything we've seen at Bama, he was never rushed. He was, he's offensive, he was barely touched, but when he did need to get out of the pocket, he was the smoothest guy I've seen out of the draft class, wow. just sliding, getting out of the pocket. I, I thought all along, you know, there was hearsay here left and right about, is he going to be drafted? More? I mean, it was always going to be Bryce Young for Carolina, not even a close. I'm not worried necessarily about his height. His height doesn't matter. Now, he looks fragile on film. And what I mean by that, he looks like he weighed in like 190. 
195, when the stresses of the season get in, yeah. and you're barely eating and you're working out every day, is he going to be above 180? That's what I'm worried about. I'm not worried about his height. I'm worried about his weight. Can he sustain these massive human beings? These he needs Aaron to Donalds. Pick up those 12 pounds for Russell Wilson. Yeah, Eat that's what I'm saying. Just switch them up. Switch them up a little bit. So I, I am that's glad the perception's point, changed. And I'm not going to lie and sit here and say that when I wasn't drafted, even at all, like it, it, it hurt a little. But also, like, hey, my agent was like, you're just not tall enough. And now it's like, that's not the case. So I'm glad the perception's changing. But also I had to work and fight and scratch and claw for every single thing that I've had like in my NFL career. And so I wouldn't change it at all. Like it's left a chip on my shoulder um, to say, hey, I always have to be in prove it mode. And that's sort of how all NFL quarterbacks have to be in the National Football League. Like you have to be in prove it mode yeah. constantly. That's really, really well said. Uh, I want to ask you about a couple of NFL storylines because you are an analyst. You're doing it while you play. I mean, you yeah. did it last year for NFL media, which is amazing. And that's a job that a lot of guys around the league would love to have. And you, you had it and were breaking things down and hopefully seeing it from a little bit different of a vantage point, taking a step back. This Stefan Diggs thing in April, there were some weird tweets. I didn't like it. I asked Sean McCoy about it. He's like, there's nothing to it. And then, of course, this sort of happens, and there's something weird, right? There's something to it. There's something to it. So you're hearing Sean McDermott at the top of the show, who, by the way, he said a couple days ago, very concerning. Very concerning. Very concerning. That's, like, that's, that to me, like... I don't know why he said that. Why, I even saw if that it is, on why Twitter are you saying that? where I get everything, and he said very concerned, and then he flips the switch and said, it's ended. I'm like... Wait, what? But maybe it did. You, but, but but you, as a head coach, you know what you're doing. Yeah, it was weird. You go in front of the media, yeah. and Sean McDermott is amazing. One of the top five Best. favorite coaches out there, like just a solid human being. But when you go from saying very concerned one day, Stefan Diggs is at physicals, he's at meetings, but he doesn't show up at practice. They had a blow up, whatever. That happens. I get it. But then you come on the media, you say he's very concerned, and then the next day, like, Hey, he's back in the building. Everything's all good. And then they cancel their Wednesday practice. Right. Um, which is that that to me is like it's an interesting timeline of events. And <laughs> and I thought Mitch Morris said it yeah. perfectly yesterday like, "Hey, like it's I think his, we have it. Let's it's, listen. Yeah, let's take let's a listen. listen. What, what good good I throw. love Stefan Diggs. I got to do. I got to come out here and do my job, you know? And and I want Steph and, and everyone to be the happiest version of themselves. He is one of he's he's one of the best teammates I've been around. I also think that they're working through it. I think they're they're doing the thing that they're supposed to do, which is have possibly uncomfortable conversations, have some have some candidness, which can be hard at times. But in the end, you appreciate it and you work out whether any facet of life. So, uh, to answer your question, I don't totally know what's going on, so I can't answer it. But I'm sure it'll work itself out one way or another. <clears throat> I hadn't seen that yet. Why is this playing out so publicly? It's just a weird Yeah, be, well, because uh, what happened after the loss, obviously the playoff loss last year in to the, the Bengals. Yeah, in mm -hmm. the snow. And then obviously, like, there's been something, there's something up. And it's something that, uh, listen, Stefan, everything I've heard about him is, is he's awesome. He's a competitor. It's probably the competitor in him mm -hmm. coming out. But I also agree with what the former Tiger, Mitch Morris, said. <laughs> I mean, Mizzou, great there. Yeah. Is like, hey, like, Everyone else has stuff to do. Like, you got to get in. Josh Allen's working on it. Stefan Diggs is working on it. That was an honest Brandon answer. B. Yeah, it was an honest answer, yeah. and, and you you can appreciate that. But at the end of the day, like, uh, everyone's like, hey, it's done, it's done, it's done. It seems like a lot of people are getting to his agent and putting it out to the media, like, just oh. drop it. Let's not do it. We're going to summer. Let's not make it a thing. But there's something to be said about, like, what's going on. I don't think it's a huge deal. Uh, it's hard to speculate, like Mitch said, but some, some, something else that, is like, going on. Right now is the time that like teams should be heart, like coaches should be harping on, like don't do anything. Stay out of the media. Like don't you, don't you yeah. guys realize we have nothing to talk about? Yeah, yeah. That's it, my it, take. Like people, yeah. I just heard uh, impromptu emergency PSA to everybody out there, teams wise. Like we have nothing. So like when you're thinking about like you know, doing something, whether you're, you know, on a yacht somewhere or in Vegas somewhere and, like, something might get, like, videotaped or, or, or like, whatever, like, might play out. Like, we are going to, we are, we are starving. <laughs> we are thirsty. We have been walking around a barren desert since February just looking for scraps like vultures and hyenas. Don't give it to us. Don't, this, this is probably a nothing and, but there's nothing. So we're all literally, like, when chum lands in the water, like, ah, let's go get it and, like, crush it and pull it under and eat something and so like that would be my advice and that's probably what this is but it is interesting 
if it creeps up again, which it might, because the playoff stuff is going to happen yeah. for the Bills, we hope so. But you've been you've been around stars. I mean, Stephon Diggs is a bona fide star. No doubt. We saw him become a star with Mini Miracle. Yeah. Like, I will never forget that in my oh, entire life. Neither will I. I was on you, the sideline. Yeah. Oh, it's awful. Oh, um, yeah. Man. Sean Payton. Um, <laughs> Travis Kelsey. You've yes. been around the Michael Thomas. Speaking yeah. of things like not being in media, but like when somebody gets decked, like it's going to be and you yeah. have to face it, that didn't happen here. Yeah. What is the key? What is the key to those quarterback receiver relationships? Well, it, it, it you know it starts in the off season. It starts now because you have so much more time. You're 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 almost at like a eight to two p.m. job every day. So your only job is to go work out, have meetings, build relationships, yeah. and the good and the great relationships between quarterbacks and receivers. They're throwing on the side in the off season. Hmm. They're spending time together in the off season. I'm not saying that everyone is right because a lot of guys come June 15th today is like the day that everyone disperses and these head coaches, like you were saying, hope that nothing happens in the off season yeah. that gets on media. But what's you see more and more quarterbacks, star quarterbacks, star receivers doing it. They get they're getting together for these pre-training camp throwing sessions, and that's awesome. That that helps build camaraderie. That shows you that you're both on the same page. So when you go into training camp, it's not going to be like, hey, we're not on the same page. But there's a lot that goes into this, right? Like you're grown men. Everyone has their own stuff to do, to quote Mitch Morris again. But can you get on the same page? And, and what are you willing to give up? Because everyone has something to do. Right. Are you willing to give up and sacrifice? What are you willing to give up and sacrifice to be really, really good in this league? Because the only way you get that way is through repetition. And by growing as a player, by growing yeah. as, as But inevitably, an something's going to happen, right? Or inevitably, somebody's yeah. going to get their feelings hurt. They're not getting the ball. These are personalities or yeah. millionaires. These are whatever. So I guess I would just say, have you ever, you know, do you have to love your quarterback? Do you have to be Travis Kelsey and Mahomes? If or you want can the ball. you be? Yeah. So if you want the ball. You were never in, a, you've been in so many locker rooms. You've never been in a locker room where like the wide receiver one or two doesn't love the quarterback or, or mutual or, and, and it, it worked. Never. It has to be. Yeah, I'm sure there are some situations like yeah. that. Brandon Marshall, Jay Cutler comes to mind. Yeah, but also like, I mean, there's big personalities, like you said, you said it so well. There's big personalities around the league, but for every locker room that I've been in, which has been a lot yeah. through 14 years, it's like, hey, these receivers and these quarterbacks, they're on the same page because, listen, no one's getting paid if y'all aren't on the same page. If this quarterback, yeah. if you're the number one receiver and you're not meshing with the quarterback, hey, you're not getting, if you're the quarterback and you're not meshing with your receivers, you're not getting paid either. So it's work it out, gentlemen. Work it out. Yeah, yeah. it's it's a grown men's sport. We're gonna take a short break here. Finally, geez, the <laughs> longest segment ever. We'll be back with Chase Daniel, and uh, we gotta talk to you a little bit more about Herbert. But Hammer will yeah. be here. Hammer, proud dad over there, just watching this happen. We'll be back. Grab a slice of Shakespeare. <laughs> go through the lawn, oh, maybe turn around and get some booches, Mizzou! We've got Chase Daniel here in the studio. As some of you know, Matt Hamilton, also uh, a Mizzou graduate, and he was a student coach with him and the rest of the quarterbacks at Missouri. Do we have photos? Look at you two. Oh, no beard. Look, hey, hammer in the background, but no beard? That doesn't Come look on. like a hammer. It doesn't even look the like KU you. KU game. The KU, that was that was <laughs> awesome. Oh, my gosh. Was that after a night at Harpo's? Oh, Hamilton's that? You know, that, uh, had some Big beers. Chugs. Look at the What's flavor that? saver. What's that on your what are we doing? There, the Chase? flavor saver. Gosh. I'm so glad my wife got me to grow a beard. <laughs> that was before Look you got you. the Ed Hardy collection going. Yes, too. oh my God. Ed you owe your wife everything. She's got. She's getting you prepped for TV. Yes. She's dressing you. Yeah. Three beautiful kids. Fashion advice. I you mean, should she be is, giving her gifts on Sunday. I totally agree. Yeah. Yeah. yeah let's do uh, it. Chase, uh, Justin Herbert, we want to talk about it. Yeah. He's in the middle of contract negotiations. We got to talk to him at Super Bowl. This dude was hurt. One of the toughest players out there. That's what we know. And there's people out there who are idiots that don't believe he should be paid like one of the top quarterbacks in the league. You spent the last two years backing him up. You know him inside and out in that locker room, on the field and off of it. Uh, you were with Matthew Stafford, of course, um, Drew Brees. Take us inside the film. Show us, guys, does Justin belong in that top tier of QBs that you know so well? I mean, I totally, totally agree. And I'm not just biased because I've been there, but just what he's been able to do, yeah. um, not only off the field for that team, but on the, on the field for this team. This is Week three against Jacksonville, all right? Okay. We're in an empty set. We're getting the brake speed off of us. He doesn't need to be playing right now. It's third and 15. And what we have here is a little bit of show of his arm strength. Right now, they're in two deep safeties and they're man underneath. This play is not meant for this. You're gonna see Jalen Guyton in the slot right here okay. go up, run a post. 
Justin sees the field safety get off the hash to go cover Josh Palmer down here. And what does Justin do? Buy some time. He throws it off a foot, and it's like a 62 wow. to 65 yard dime. Ba -ba -boom. I mean, the, the the crazy thing about this is this play is not made for man coverage, but he makes some time. He's <laughs> off a of foot. He just bare, like slings with a, it with a like, rib injury. With a rib injury, by the way, he is like cracked ribs. How bad rib were the injuries? Cartilage. It was horrible. horrible. It was horrible. Wow. I mean, it, it, he would never say it publicly, but yeah. he he struggled with it. But he he missed one snap all year long. <laughs> You're gonna look at this fourth and twelve Let's game. Go. On the line. This is a play-in game two years ago, 2021 against Raiders. Two-man coverage again. Nope, it's coming down, and we like to call this guy a robber. Why is it a robber? He robs the middle of the field. Like He's it. looking at Keenan Allen in the slot right there. Of course, they double Keenan. But, but they only rush three people here. Steps up and out. This is fourth and 12. This is not like first and 10. Throws it in a place where fourth only Keenan Allen can get it. I mean, if we don't even have this game, we don't, there's no way we even take it to overtime. He scans the field, steps up, once again, just off the right foot. Back shoulder, by the way, with a guy draped all over him. I mean, you see this stuff all the time in practice, but for him to actually do it in a game with the game on the line, like, for all these people out there, they are idiots that they're saying that they don't think he can he can play or he's he's not good enough to get paid in the top five receivers. He will. I think we're gonna see it come out. It's it's gonna be a high number. Yeah. And the other thing too that I love, it's not just the special things that he can do athletically and the arm strength. I don't think he gets enough credit for his processing and the stuff he does within the confines of the play in the pocket. Check this out. Also Show against me. the Raiders. You're gonna have a little drag dig combo here at the bottom. Skinny post from DeAndre Carter in the slot. And the Raiders are disguising this coverage to try to trick him here. They got the safety, walk down, he's gonna drop back. They're playing a Tampa 2 look. Herbert deciphers it immediately. He knows where he wants to go with this football. He wants to go to DeAndre Carter on the skinny post. And you'll see he's gonna put this ball perfectly in between these three defenders on a rope and protect Carter from the linebacker, Divine Chase Diablo, like, as he's yeah. dropping in the middle of the field, too. And you'll see it really from this angle, the trajectory of this throw, just on an absolute rope, a laser, and you can't place it any better than that because he protects his receiver from the hit. This is special stuff, and again, we get so wowed by the athletic stuff, but this is the stuff you have to do consistently to be a great quarterback in this league, and we see it from him snap after snap. Yeah, and, and honestly, that route was supposed to be a corner route. Really? Yes, and so what they got on the page before the game is, hey, if it's too high, Tampa 2, like you said, let's just take a post. Let's take a skinny post. DeAndre Carter was awesome for us, not only to run game last year, but stepped up with some big injuries to Keenan Allen. Yeah, and, 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 and again, to see that, to see that that safety is going to drop yeah. and make that adjustment on the fly, that makes it even more special yeah. knowing that. To yeah. those lasers you like. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Herbert has 102 total touchdowns in his first three seasons. You know, I'm a numbers girl. That's more than any quarterback in NFL history. That's breaking Dan Marino's previous mm. record off the field. Yeah. I've heard I'm an introvert. And people don't think I am. I'm, I, you? Yeah, I really am. No. I, I like to recharge. I like, seriously. <laughs> yeah. He says that he is. He's a, Very much so. He's in his head a little bit. Yeah. People say that that means he can't be a leader. I totally disagree with that. He is 100% an introvert, and he opens up to guys who he trusts and who he loves. But he is the same guy every single day in that locker room, and that is what guys want out of their quarterback. They want consistency. They want the same guy. If you're introverted, be introverted. If you're extroverted, if you're a personality, if you want to lead by uh, like by yelling and scream, do that. Yeah. And there are guys like that. Pat Mahomes is like that. But you're saying Justin's Justin Herbert like works. That team has is in his hands. Absolutely. Like, yeah. I mean, look at what he's done. He yeah. breaks mid. Like, yeah. first of all, like, there's a difference between not actually performing on the field, not putting up stats, not actually doing what you say you're gonna do. But when he does it, and he does it at a rate that's the best in NFL history, like, come on guys. Yeah, like, there we go, good. that's all you have yeah. to, I mean, all I just see is this tape, it's unbelievable. Chase, Daniela, <laughs> you're either uh, going to a broadcast booth or an NFL team near you. We're wishing you all of the best, of course, and come back and visit us. And we really put you to work today. We'll be back here. <laughs> and I, I'm like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> After this commercial break, and I've done a lot of stupid things on this show, one of the stupidest things ever is going to happen. I'm going to let people take control and say whatever they want right here on the show. Don't go anywhere, oh boy. NBA Finals are over. We fell in love with NBA First Basket Bets here, and uh, we have a couple guys on our production staff, not me, and they did their thing, and they won. And what did they win when they 
called the first basket a full minute of air time. Not quite a full minute, Eric, but go for it. You hit it. All right, bam. I hit it with bam. I'm on the clock right now. <laughs> and I just wanna talk about why I don't like the MLB pitch clock. And the reason I don't like it is because as a lifelong Brewers fan, Woo! it is stealing my time from Mr. Baseball, Bob Euchre. Okay, you can relate. You're a Brewers fan yourself. Everyone thinks we're dating now because that is what I think you're why <laughs> listening to Brewers game. Go on. Look, don't let the internet talk. Okay. All right, there we go. All right. Uh, you know, as a Brewers fan, there's nothing we love more than hearing Bob Euchre talk about putting Cedar Crest ice cream oh, on a bratwurst, you know? Wow. Like, is it worth taking 30 minutes off the game to miss out on stories of Bob Euchre getting pissed drunk with Harry Carey at a Knights of Columbus charity auction? I don't think so, okay? I don't want 30 less minutes of baseball and missing a story about Bob Euchre drinking grasshoppers with Telly Tavolis uh, Tavoli and, you know, Bob Hope at the Smokehouse in Burbank, okay? <laughs> I don't like this pitch clock. We need to get up, get out of here, and be gone with it. All right? I thought you were reading a script. Very impressive. Who's next? Hamilton, go. I can't believe you left Tom Brady for Eric, but um, I want to do something in the wow. spirit of Father's Day uh, today. First of all, happy Father's Day to my dad, but I found out something about a show dad that you may not know. Brian's father, Kirk Barton, was a quarterback at the University of Buffalo. What? Let's bring up the picture. <laughs> happy Father's Day to Kirk. That's your grandpa? And wait, if you want to understand why Brian is the way he is, listen to this quote after they canceled Buffalo's football program in 1970. He was asked about transferring to play somewhere else, and he said, I can't for the life of me think anyone would put up money for me to go somewhere else when I have a bum knee and only one year of eligibility left. Way to sell yourself, Kirk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He says it like it is. It's how, it's how you do it. Kirk, Kirk, happy Father's Day to happy all the dads Father's out Day, there. Kirk. All right, let's go to... Conrad, parts, sites, parts unknown, what's up? <laughs> All right, Kay, well, you know, today is our 169th episode of season one. This is the end of season one. Woo! It takes a village to put on a show like this, 20 plus people, so many talented people in this group. So happy to be a part of it. We've covered the Super Bowl, March Madness, the Masters, Kentucky Derby, NFL Draft, and NBA Finals. So much great stuff, which leads me to UK Adams. You got that dog in you, girl. Oh you God. got that dog in you. Rain or shine, oh sick, God. no sleep, overnight commercials, red eyes in New York, shows from Cabo. One red thing is clear over the past 170 shows, Kay Adams got oh, that fun. dog in her. <laughs> Talking. Listen, Kay, truly, you're the only person on our staff not to miss a single show, and it is extremely impressive. Well, you know, because if, I don't, if I'm not here, we don't have a show. I so hear, I, 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 I hear you, but you have to hear me, all right? Because when that red light comes on, no one, no one shines brighter oh, than you. Oh, I love you. Well, your forehead's shining a little bit brighter, but that's okay. We'll be back next season. Conrad, I love you. I always will.